Can you all turn with me to Luke chapter 19, verse 37? Remember, I love the sound of flipping paper. It really calms my nerves. <laughs> What? As soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles which they had seen, shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd, they said to him, Teacher, Rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we come to you today to learn about your word. Father, I pray that you, this, this time of praise, this time of learning, is your time. I pray that you just come down and are among us, Lord, in this time. Speak, Lord. We're listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This, that, the passage of Scripture takes place at the, the, glory, the, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Jesus is coming in for the Passover feast. And the, his disciples, they, they've gathered out the palm branches. They've gathered their cloaks. And they've laid them on the ground. And he's riding his donkey. And, and he's entering in as a king would enter in. And they see that and they love that and they want him to be their king at this time. And so they praise him. And they praise him so much that it looks like they're forgoing God and praising Jesus. And so the Pharisees step in and they're like, hey, whoa now, you've taken this too far. You need to tell them to stop. They've gone too far. And Jesus, he says to them, what? He says, if they stop, those rocks on the ground are going to cry out to me. Sure. Because, because that's what will happen. They can't stop. They have to praise. And we have to praise. For two reasons. The first reason is if, if we don't praise, those rocks are going to cry out. We don't... And we should be the ones crying out. We should be the ones shouting for joy, praising the name of Jesus. And the second reason is, well, we don't want to hear those rocks. Those rocks have a gravelly voice. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. As, as he would say, uh, that, that was, uh, what was it, two-thirds of a pun? Yeah, P.U. P.U. Yeah. I, I had to, though. Had to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so... Today, if you haven't guessed, we're going to talk about praise and what that really means. And so, thinking back to grade school and grammar school, which is closer to me than, than some other people, <laughs> I was taught about the, the five W's. I don't know if anybody else has ever taught that. It's the, when you're writing a paper, you need to answer these questions. The who, what, when, where, and why, and then that lonely how over here. I don't know why that one got left out, uh, but that's, that's really where, where this comes from, and that's what we're going to answer today, and to do that, we're going to look right at the scripture, and it tells us everything that we need to know, uh, because it's wonderful that way, it was written that way, for our, that very purpose, and so I'd like everyone to turn to Proverbs 1. And when you get there... I'd like you to turn the page back one and go to Psalm 150. <laughs> Tricked you there a little. Right? So, Psalm 150. This is, there's a nice little note in my, my Bible. This calls this the, the final great hallelujah. This is the very last song, and it was most likely written to be the last song. And when I read it, I had to like, do a double take and uh, don't shake my head like that. That didn't feel good. <laughs> I had to do a double take and I had to be like, why 
Why wasn't this at the beginning of the book? I, this, this lays out all the groundwork. Why is this at the end? This should be towards the beginning. But I, I'm sure there was a reason. <coughs> I'm going to read it for you today. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound, with harp and lyre. Praise Him with timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise Him with loud symbols. Praise Him with resounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. What, is, what does that mean? How can we answer these questions? But it, it lays it out. Praise the Lord. What does praise mean? So that... That fun little thing at the back of the Bible, it's called the concordance, that gives you a little bit of a, a clue to it. I know I'm going to be really cliche right here and go dictionary and concordance, and that's where I'm going to get this definition. <laughs> but the, it, what, mine, what mine says is it says it in two parts. Referring to praise, it's an acclamation or to give honor. Or as a verb, it's to extol or to glorify. So, we're going to go back. To, now I'm going to go to the actual dictionary definition here. This is the Cambridge Dictionary. So you know it's very <laughs> up and up. And up. Uh, but they did something really neat when I read it. And it was really cool. And it separated it out into two separate meanings of praise. And the first one was the the person-to-person -person praise. So if I gave praise to you, what I'm doing is I'm, I'll read this, to express, express strong admiration for or approval of a person or something done. So I can praise you for something that you've done. I can give you praise. Then there's the second part. And this is the part that I thought was really cool. And it, next to the word praise, it had a little subcategory and it, and it had it in parentheses, it says, worship God. And under that, it says, to honor, worship, and express admiration for God. So, we have our what? And we have our, our first two, because there's two. So, we have what? We have praise, and we know what that is now. And we have God, our first two. Alright, so, look back to the passage. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. So, this is pretty easy. We're, we're actually sitting in what we call the sanctuary, right? This, this is the sanctuary. So, we have that one out of the way. Sort of. <laughs> See, back in, in the day, they didn't have churches in every single city. They had little groups that met. But then they would have to travel to Jerusalem once a year or twice a year, however many times a year they felt like to, to perform the actual sacrifices. Those, and that's how they, and at that time they would praise the Lord. And it started out in a, a tent. Uh, it was called the tabernacle. And uh, God said to Moses, construct for me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. Okay, so we can praise God in the church and we can praise God in a tent somewhere. Uh, but later on, that tent was actually taken again, or that was taken away, and they were replaced it with a temple. A big thing, really big. I, I won't give you the day on the, the measurement, but it was huge and it was beautiful. And uh, it, it was made specifically to worship God in this place. And then, but before all of that, they worship God on mountaintops and on hillsides. So where can we worship God? Where can we praise Him? I'm going to go to the, the source, and we're going to go and we're going to see the, the words of Jesus. This is going to be found in John chapter 4, verse 21. And Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman. See, the Samaritans, they worshiped on mountaintops. 
where the Jews, they worshipped in the temple. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. And then down to verse 23. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You see, the sanctuary, for me, it's a resting place. It's a place where God's spirit resides. In Exodus 40, during the dedication of the tabernacle, the Lord's presence filled the tabernacle so much that Moses couldn't even enter into the tabernacle. He was just blocked because it was so full with the glory of the Lord. The same thing happened in 1 Kings 8 but during the dedication of the temple. It was filled with the glory of the Lord. That, that God cloud that's so described in the, in the Old Testament filled the temple. Mm. And the, the priests couldn't enter in. And then it happens again in Acts chapter 2. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise, like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were settled. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of the Lord doesn't rest in a place, but in the hearts of the believers, in, in the followers of Christ. So we're no longer bound to a place or a, a time, but we're bound to Christ always. So we, we have become the sanctuary of the Lord. So the praise should always be from us, from within us, throughout us. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty expanse. That expanse, that's kind of a weird word. Nobody, they don't really explain that. But back in Genesis 1, verse 8, it says, God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning a second day. So the expanse is the universe. This isn't, this isn't the heaven, the spiritual heaven. This is the physical heaven, the universe. Out in space, this is the sky in space. So we praise God in the universe. God is the maker of the universe, so we praise Him in it. Amen. There isn't anywhere that we can't praise God. There isn't anywhere that we shouldn't praise God. All right, so let's move on to the why. Why, why should we praise God? Why do I have to? Maybe I don't want to. Maybe I don't feel like it today. Well, let's go back to the, to the scripture. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. <clears throat> Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. I don't know about you, but there are very few things in my life that I have done that have been described as mighty. <laughs> and no one has ever used the term excellent greatness to describe me. Never. So, so what, what are some of the things He's done? I'm going to tell you one. But it's going to encompass a whole awful lot. And it goes back to Genesis 1. Creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke it. One word and it was there. So imagine yourself with me. And we're sailing through space. I don't mean like Star Trek or Star Wars. But we're just, we're just sailing through space. Just flying. Right? It's pretty nice. And you see the stars around you. And you see the nebulas and the dwarf stars and, and all types of scientific words that I, some of them I don't even know the meaning to. You see black holes and, and you see those galaxies and they're spinning. You hear that song? I'm so overwhelmed. The galaxies spinning their heavenly dance. They do that. They spin around and around. And everything in them spins around and around. And you can see the pictures of them spinning. And those are like the pillars of creation. And they just go on forever. Or what it seems like it. That's a mighty deed. That is an excellent greatness. It would take a God with excellent greatness to create that. Right. And then let's look closer at home. It's still in the creation scope. Let's look at our own little solar system. 
are with our tiny little star and our pretty blue planet, which is just happens to be the exact distance away from, the, from that tiny little star for life to happen. And he set them just right. That's a mighty deed. That is an excellent greatness. And then we look further and closer at that little planet, and it's held together with the gravity. Who could have invented gravity? Think about this. This is a, a mechanism that spans the universe, and God put it together. That is a mighty deed. That is an excellent greatness. And then you look closer in, and you see all this life, this green, not this time of year, but you see all the green. <laughs> and you look around you, and you're like, wow, everything is covered with life. And you look closer in, look at, look at us. We stand out as the, the <coughs> pinnacle of this life. And look at us. We are just a huge mechanism. Look at your hands. Look at all of the, the detail that goes into that. Wiggle your fingers and feel your wrist. Do you feel the tendons moving? And now all of that comes from, from an electrical, chemical, biological outlet that comes from your brain telling you to do that. That is huge. Who could think this stuff up? How could this stuff happen randomly? It can't. Absolutely. It has to be specific. Amen. It has to be perfect in order to be made that way. And then you look closer in and you see all of, you see trillions of cells in your body working together. For what purpose? Why would they do that naturally? That doesn't make sense. And you see all the atoms that make up those cells. And those things, those subatomic particles that make up all those atoms. And every single atom in your body contains a nuclear explosion. Think about that. You are walking nuclear disasters. <laughs> so I want, I want everybody today to look to their neighbor, and I want you to say, <laughs> you are a mighty deed from the one who has excellent greatness. And that was only chapter one. <laughs> Think about the mighty deeds that we hear, that we read about. That was only chapter one. Right. Now moving on to the how. Right. How should we praise the Lord? How do we do it? There's a big long list in here. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with harp and lyre. Praise Him with timbrel and dancing. Praise Him with stringed instruments. That one was for you. <laughs> and pipe. Praise Him with loud cymbals and with resounding cymbals. Now it took the psalmist, it took him two verses, and it took him six lines, and it took him 34 words to say all that. And I'm going to try to sum it up in two. Okay? Do something. Amen. Do something. I don't think that there's a wrong way to praise the Lord. As long as your heart is in the right place, as long as your motives are correct, there's not a wrong way. Shout, scream, dance, sing. I, I, I can't think of anything. Pray, beg, cry, whisper. Clap your hands. There's not a wrong way to praise the Lord when you're focused on Him. When you're praising Him. When you, all that is there is Him in your image, in your sight. Tell Him how you feel about Him. Let Him know, and that gives Him your praise. Right, now it's time to move on to the second who. This isn't doctor. Oh. <laughs> I knew you were going there. This isn't the doctor. This is, this is the second who. Who should praise the Lord? Verse 6. 
Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Yes. Everything. Everyone. You see Muhammad in Saudi Arabia, he should be praising the Lord. You see Lee over in China, he should be praising the Lord. You should see Luca in Europe, and he should be praising the Lord. It doesn't matter. Those no names, by the way, are the most common in those areas. I checked. <laughs> <laughs> but they should be praising the Lord. It doesn't matter. Even those stones that we talked about in Luke 19, with those gravelly voices, they should be praising the Lord, even if they don't have a breath. Which just leaves when. I was, I was sitting here uh, in, in worshiping with the Lord, and he spoke to me again. And I, I'm going to incorporate it into everything I have because, oh, man, I could feel that spirit moving. Oh, I could feel it. When? One of the lines from the songs that we were singing is, when I'm in the darkness, you know, it, even when I'm in the darkness, that's when I should be singing. That's when I should be praising the Lord the most, because He's still there. When should we praise the Lord? It's so silent in this, in this scripture about the when, isn't it? It just doesn't say anything. Do you know why? Because we shouldn't stop. <laughs> we shouldn't have to be told to start. It's not an hour of, of praise every, every Sunday or five minutes of praise every morning. It is a lifetime of praise that we should be singing, that we should be dancing, that we should be shouting hallelujah to every single day, every single hour of every single day, every single moment. And they didn't even think that they needed to include that because everybody should know. Mm. Throughout the day, every day, we should turn our thoughts to Him. We should give Him the praise that He deserves. And we should just love Him. Because He loves us. Dear Glorious Father, we just we praise You today, Lord. Let us lift You up, Lord, every day, every hour, everywhere. Lord, You alone are just worthy of all glory and praise. Be with us, Lord, throughout this week, throughout this month, throughout this year. This year just started. Let us begin it with praise, Lord. Let us, let us worship you every hour of every day. Father, we, we love you. And we lift you up. In Jesus' name, amen.